Katrina, so maybe the brushes are screwed up. I'm going to stop the camera and clean out that inside of that wire some before I put that back on. And I hold this thing so it doesn't go in there and scratch the insides. It isn't Squeeze it a little bit more. Jump down inside there. Now I'm going to take this brush out. This one underwater in Katrina, so this is in lovely condition. Probably still good, but I'm going to put a new one in there anyways. Now what happened, I lost the wire inside there, so I took a jackknife, stuck it into the lug. They can pull that out. It's kind of unnerving to clean the inside of that one out. I did these four bolts here. And finally pulled this off because I want to go through and put some oil grease inside this roller bearing that went underwater. I want to take the end bell off. Here's the connector down in here. Just squeeze these together. We squeeze the part to the left. It's undone. I should probably be sanded some down. There's the capacitor and the bearing in there. There's the two diodes. Got some corrosion up here. This is like some 600 grit. I'm just going to just try to get this. It rides in the roller bearing. Okay, the diameter of this shaft here is three fourths of an inch. And that runs on the roller bearing over here. This is held in place by, it looks like it's riveted, but in closer inspection, these look like they're torques, little bitty torque screws. And under there is the roller bearing. If that ever seizes up, what it'll do is it'll spin in the plastic. So this has got a 3 4 inch shaft. And the bearing looks like it has an OD roughly of about 1.1. And the depth is about crudely about 8 tenths of an inch. That's just seat of the pants. So. If I had my micro torque, I'd take this out of there. It's also got a capacitor here that's uh, 130 microfarad, 200 volts. And here are the diodes that are, I'm pulling off and cleaning here to put this back on. So that's all corroded too. Okay, there's the needle bearing in there that I'm putting some oil on and then putting a rag and getting the rust out of it. If I had a new one right here, I'd put a new one in. So I'm going to have to If I get this thing to go in, I'm going to, later on, I'm going to replace this bearing. But it looks like it's held in place by some tiny torque screws. And this plate comes off. And you got the capacitor and the brush holders. The brush holder is actually part of this. So I'm just going to 
try to clean out as much crud on here, then lube it up with some synthetic, synthetic oil and a little bit of synthetic grease I'm going to put in there. Okay, in this end bell, the capacitor is across both brushes, and then one brush goes to the blue wire in the center, and you have a diode that goes from yellow wire to this bus bar, goes over to this one, goes back up to the brush, and then goes to the capacitor. So you get three wires here on the stator. And I've lubed all this up. This is the output connector. It's all corroded. I have to work on that. And here's the control box. You can see the scum line from uh, the salt water. At least got up to here. Actually, there's some Martian crap under here, so it probably went up at least as high as here on the generator. Okay, we put some mobile synthetic grease just a little bit on the inside of the bearing. We're going to put this back on the stator here. Went ahead and sanded this a little bit, get some of the corrosion off. We're going to go ahead and put the end bell back on. Okay, going to grab the unit here. I'm going to put this on. I'm probably going to cheat here and put this on first. At least see how it goes on. It's easier than it looks. How's that tight? I went ahead and cleaned a bunch of that off. bottom here has got a, holds the wire up here, that's the ground wire. Okay, I thought I lost a washer, but there's one here stuck on the motor. bent over. I bent it so I could get out of it. These look like they're 5 16 they don't have to be super tight. This has got a plastic end belt too. Okay, we're going to crank it up here again. Turn a little bit of gas on.
Okay, the next thing they'll do will be to put an actual venturi on here and a demand regulator so this actually can uh, regulate without me moving the knob over here. What that does is that uh, it applies low pressure to a regulator here and then you have venturi that pulls out the gas that it needs. This current uh, regulator here is for propane. It's got about 14 inches of water, which is a little bit high for my demand regulator, so I need to get a different uh, regulator on there.